Today I'm smoking a pork butt. This is basic barbecue and it may be one of the best places to start for learning how to barbecue. So this is a simple approach and it will yield some absolutely delicious barbecue. I'm starting with the 10 pound pork butt that I was fortunate enough to buy at 88 cents a pound. The main thing that you may want to remember is that we're just going to do a little bit of extra trimming on the pork butt and it pays off big time. Now, is trimming the pork butt necessary? Well, absolutely not. You can still make awesome barbecue whether you trim it or you don't trim it, but you're probably gonna be a little bit happier with the results if you remove some of that excess fat before you do your smoking. Let's start with that fat cap, and this is the area on top. It consists of a layer of fat, then it's got a thin layer of muscle followed by another layer of fat. And we're gonna peel off that fat cap using our knife. You can take it off in one piece or you can take it off in layers. Removing the fat cap, it helps the pork butt to hold more rub, it creates more bark. I like to save the good parts of the trimmings because I'm gonna make sausage in cooler weather so it's not going to waste. Now here you can trim off any tags, irregular areas, remove some silver skin. Now flip it over, take off some excessive fat, take off silver skin. Keep in mind we aren't doing a competition trim, we're going to get the easy stuff. Now this next part will greatly enhance the pork butt. Carefully between the muscles with our knife, we're going to open that pork butt up. It's butterfly. Carefully, you're gonna trim off the silver skin with the knife. You're gonna move that fat and sinew, get all the other stuff, the connective tissue. There's not much use in keeping most of this stuff. Rule of the thumb, if you don't wanna eat it, nobody else does either. Now keep in mind, this is for the backyard cook, so you don't have to spend the rest of your life trimming up this pork butt. Get the easy parts, which that's the majority, and then you move on. Butterfly in the butt, removing some of that fatty connective tissue lets us create more bark because it lets you get the rub onto a larger surface area. You really get a lot of bang for your buck by doing it this way. Now, I'm using Lee and Parrots with Cestershire sauce as my binder. Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Rub is my rub of choice. And right now you can't buy this, but you can make it yourself. Here's a link right up here to walk you through the process of making it. Bottom line, just give your pork butt a generous coating of your favorite rub. I'm smoking this pork butt on my Yoder YS1500 pellet smoker. It's right here behind me. And I'm using B&B Championship Blend Pellets. The smoker's preheated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And you don't have to go this low in your temperature. Lower temperatures are prone to producing more smoke. And pellet smokers aren't known for being too smoky, so starting at a lower temperature might give you a little edge when it comes to smoking. And keep in mind that your meat's only gonna absorb a certain amount of smoke anyway. In the early part of the cook, that's generally where most of the magic happens. All right, my cook rocked along at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about five and a half hours, and then I upped that temperature to 275. At this point, the pork butt probably has all the smoky flavor that it's capable of under these conditions. So now it's time to bring it up to temp, which in this case I needed at 175 before I wrap it. That took about three more hours to get it up to 175. And once that temperature gets to 175, I grab my Mr. Barbecue stainless steel oversized spatula with the folded handle. It's $9.99 on Amazon. And I move the pork butt over to the processing table. Now this goes on top of some butcher paper. Give that paper coating with parquet or you could use some drippings from your cook. Then wrap it up. Now it's going on top of a rack and into a pan. And I added about 500 milliliters of water. That was one bottle. And I put in 200 milliliters of apple juice, which was one of those little juice boxes, and then covered it tightly with foil. If you've watched my channel very much, then you know that I love to finish off things in my Cook Shack electric smoker. It's just way more efficient than pellet smokers, and it has exceptional control. Anyway, at this point in the cook, you're done with the smoke. All we need is heat, and the Cook Shack is a great option. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with continuing on your smoker, or you could finish it up in an oven. It's just not as efficient as my Cook Shack, and it may require more attention. Now, you've got a great amount of discretion as to your finishing temperature. Today, I'm going to go somewhat traditional. I preheated the Cook Shack to 250 degrees and the pan pork butt goes into the cook shack and I added a probe so I could monitor the internal temp. 
Now it took about three hours and 45 minutes to reach that 202 degrees internal. Now this is all happening at about 1030 at night. All right, when the butt hit 202 internal, I just went outside. I changed the temperature of the cook shack to 150 degrees. So at this point, I need the smoker temperature to be less than the internal temperature of the pork butt. And we're going down to a holding temperature. Now remember, the cook shack set points at 150. The goal here is to rest the pork butt at a food safe temperature, which that's above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the next day, mid-morning, the pork butt temperature was showing 145 degrees. And that's why I chose 150 as the holding temperature, because I wanted that padding. Remember, 140 and above, above 140 is food safe. Now you absolutely don't have to do this prolonged holding procedure, but it's a useful tool to have. You can simply hold this pork butt until you're ready to serve it. Now unwrap it, pull that bone out, and yes, it's still hot. Guys, this thing is cooked to perfection. The waste has already been removed. You got extra bark, you got extra flavor, you've got extra goodness. Enjoy. Now all you gotta do is hit that like button on your way out, consider subscribing, and I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Ha, 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 ha,